Good morning, YouTube Pie Smokers. It's going to be a little bit different video. Um, trying to change it up a bit. I'm going to talk about transmissions, which is something I do for a living. And um, some of the things you may hear, so you could, um, if you go to a mechanic, some things he may tell you, some truths, some myths. Anyway, this is a transmission clutch. Okay, this happens to be out of a General Motors. And if you look, there's a piece of steel, and there's a paper lining that's bonded to each part of the steel on both sides. This is considered a high-energy friction material, which it can take very high heat. And the way this works is there's a steel plate, a clutch, another steel plate, another clutch, and so on. And then you have what they call a pressure plate. And this gets put in a housing, and there's a snap ring on top. Each clutch pack has a clearance a, a specification, if you will. So most modern day transmissions, if not all, are synchronized shifting. So what that means is one clutch, clutch comes off, another clutch comes on. Now, what ruins these clutches most 99% of the time is the most common failure would be because of low fluid. In the east, that happens quite often because of the salt that they put on the roads, the transmission lines that run to the radiator, um, from the transmission to the bottom of the radiator to cool the fluid, rust, and then you develop a leak, and then the uh, Without knowing it, it runs low on fluid, two quarts, and it starts to slip. Once you start to feel slippage, there's not a, a lot of wear there. So if the clutch gets damaged, this stack up now, instead of having, for argument's sake, uh, eighth of an inch clearance up and down, you develop maybe three sixteenths or a quarter inch clearance. Now, most computers will compensate. The computers monitor how long a shift takes. So if it takes, uh, say, 30 seconds or 15 seconds to make a shift, and now this clutch clearance becomes incre increased because of wear, the computer will compensate by increasing pressure to get this clutch on faster. But it can only compensate to a point. Once it, it can't compensate anymore, that's when you feel the slip, which many times is too late at that point. Um, the clutch is just has too much wear in the pack, and it can't compensate any longer, so you'll get what they call a run-up between gears, like uh, many of you may have felt this. You'll shift from first to second, let's say, just to pick a shift, and you, oh, mm, mm, you get that slip in between shifts. That's because one pack came off and the other one has not come on yet because there's too much clearance. So that's why the misconception is a lot of people think uh, clutches are like brakes that have a substantial amount of meat. And in this case, it doesn't. These get damaged very quickly from a lot of different reasons. And um, that's one reason why there's no adjustments any longer. And even years ago, when they say take it in for a band adjustment, the bands were made the same way. There's a very thin paper lining on a band. And the adjustment was really there for when the unit's being put together. You have to get the proper clearance. Years ago, there was a little more meat on the bands as there are today. So there was some room for some adjustment. But most times... If your bands need adjustment, your transmission's on the way out. Nowadays, very few transmissions have bands. Most of them have been eliminated. They're clutch to clutch now. They did that to save weight. And um, this is another reason this material, this friction material, as it's known, is made of a lot of different compounds. There's Kevlar, there's uh, woven with partial Kevlar. And that's the reason manufacturers have different fluids. Um, everybody has their spin on 
the paper they use for a clutch. So you have Honda fluid, you have Chrysler fluid, you have um, everybody makes their own fluid for their friction material. Now when we rebuild them, many times we'll use an aftermarket clutch. Sometimes it's better in some cases. Um, sometimes it's not as good. Once we do that, then we can use a synthetic fluid. We don't have to be manufacturer specific in a lot of cases. Uh, we can alter that. So it's a very complex system and there's really no more, the adjustments are gone nowadays. Even dipsticks to check your fluid have disappeared. Now you have to check them through special tools underneath the vehicle. Um, of course, the manufacturer did this for money reasons. Um, if they save on a dipstick tube and a, a dipstick itself, you know, a dollar a vehicle, you're saving millions and millions of dollars. So that's the reason behind the disappearing dipsticks. I personally think it's foolish, but um, I think the manufacturer knows that most people would never check their fluid anyway. Um, so they felt, you know, let's eliminate this and save the money. And that's what they did. So that's just, uh, one little aspect of transmission repair. And, um, why there's really no room for error, so to speak. Um, typically, once you start to feel your transmission slip, uh, that's the death sentence, and it's just a matter of time, you will be needing a new transmission. Now, to keep in mind, wherever you go, educate yourself. Um, typically, and not always the case, dealers can rip you off also. Uh, but GM, just to take them, um, just they're very popular. A lot of shops shoot for the stars uh, when they give you a price, and basically anything they tell you, you you sort of have to believe because not many people know anything about their transmission. But always get multiple prices and find out what's what they're going to do for you, what's going to be covered, and a lot of old timers always felt that it's like when you go buy a TV. If this TV is a thousand dollars. And this TV next to it is $5,000. Obviously, the $5,000 TV might be better. That's not always the case. Same thing with transmission. So if one shop gives you a price of $2,000 and the shop down the street gives you a price of $5,000, don't assume that the guy giving you the $5,000 price is going to do a better job. He could be ripping you off. He could be... Um, there's a lot of variables. So you have to do your homework. Google's your best friend. Um, see what's out there. Type in your car. Uh, let's say you have a Toyota Camry. Toyota Camry transmission issues. And you'll see pages and pages of what people are saying to get a feel for if what the person that you're taking it to for repair is telling you the right thing. You have to do this today. Don't trust Unfortunately, you can't trust anybody because everybody's looking to take money from you. So, and you work hard for it like we all do. You don't mind paying, but you want to pay for the proper price and a good job. So, and Google's your best friend. I say Google because that's the most search engine everybody uses. Um... But you'll see, type it in. Uh, certain cars, I could tell you, uh, Toyota happens to be one of the best, in my opinion. Uh, we, we do the least Toyotas of all models. Uh, Ford, we do a, more of. Uh, GM, Chrysler's are all on the top of the list. Maybe because there's more on the road. Um, you, you can make an argument for that, but... Um, and right now, all manufacturers, every one of them, is having transmission problems because they have what they call growing pains. They're all trying to meet the fuel mileage standards. So they're all going with 8 and 10 speed transmissions. 
uh, which is going to be astronomical to fix. Um, I tell all my friends that the days of owning a vehicle are coming to a close. If you can stay under the mileage, lease a vehicle. This way, every few years, you trade it in, you budget the money, and you'll never have to deal with the high cost of repair if you can afford to do that. If not, get a good warranty only from the manufacturer. Do not be swayed by the aftermarket warranties. They are no good. Bottom line, they look for a way not to pay. Uh, I'll give you an example. You get an aftermarket warranty. It costs you $2,000, $3,000. The first thing they'll ask when I get the car in the shop and I have to call the insurance company, we need to see all the service records for that vehicle. If you don't have, even though it has nothing to do with it, it's in for a transmission, they want to see you change the oil at every interval that the manufacturer recommends. If you don't have that documentation, guess what? They say no warranty because you could not prove that you were maintaining the vehicle. They all do that. When you buy it, they promise you the world. Everything's covered from bumper to bumper until you go to read the fine print. And most of these aftermarket insurance companies are in foreign, not foreign, but out-of-state places. Very hard to sue them. Uh, their state's usually friendly to what they try to do. So they they just skirt uh, being right on the fringe of being illegal. And you cannot hold their feet to the fire. You're basically screwed. I tell people either get the manufacturer warranty only or budget Take the money you would have paid for that aftermarket insurance, put it in the side, add to that, and that's your car fund for repairs. You'd be far better off because the insurance companies, you know, all those jokes, it has to rain on Tuesday and that um, one inch of water has to drop before you're covered. Well, all those stories are coming true when it comes to automotive aftermarket warranties. They look for a way not to pay. And they're pretty good at it. And also, the other loophole they'll do, if they find a unit in some junkyard somewhere in the other side of the country for $300, uh, $300 with uh, 300,000 miles on it, because that unit is available, they'll give you $300 to buy that unit and the labor to put it in, and you're getting a piece of junk to put in your car that has only maybe 90,000 miles. So please be super careful everybody's looking to extract money from you without doing the proper thing and i mean that everybody so whether it's transmissions we're talking about tires do your homework and know what you're talking about so if the guy says oh uh you need blah 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 you can say to yourself oh you know i read that and that's true you have to do it like uh, remember that commercial with the suits Cy Sims, I think it was, our educated consumer is our best customer. Well, educate yourself. Unfortunately, we live in a time where you have to uh, do your homework to gain an education so you don't get ripped off. I hope that helps. Any questions automotive related, you can ask me and I'll try to answer them. Thank you.